All right, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to make this car paint inside Blender that you can use on all your future car projects. Uh, this is the same material I did on my red Porsche, my Audi e-tron, and also my Mercedes EQS SUV. So we're in Blender now, and you can see I've got my Porsche GT3 RS model. Uh, this is a model I'm doing for sort of a commercial that um, will be out in a few weeks, maybe a few months, maybe. Uh, but this model is provided by uh, HKV Studios, which they do amazing models, um, really highly detailed inside um, and outside. So check them out if you need a model. But right here, you can see I've got my car paint set up and it's set up so I can change everything on the fly really quickly and really easily. And currently I've got a image texture here um, just so I can control the color of this GT3 RS. But if I just unplug everything, you can see I've got my base color and Fresnel color. And the reason for this is that you can control each of them independently and it allows you to get kind of cool results like, like this. So if we just set that to the base color of red again, just so we can see the other things. So I've got a flake scale as well, and this will allow you to create these glossy sort of flakes which only appear in the highlights. I've got a metallic slider, so you can make it metallic or not, and then also a roughness slider. And then I've got my scratches, and I'm not gonna cover how to do these scratches, maybe in the future I might, but essentially what this is, is micro scratches that appear in the paint. And these occur in real life when you're like cleaning a car or just wiping it with something, you'll get these tiny little micro scratches. Now, you wouldn't see these like day-to-day -day life if you're just standing looking at the car. Um, but when you really zoom in, uh, you can start to see it. So I don't use this on all my cars because it's quite heavy. But when I'm zooming into parts, I always add them because I just, I like the way it catches the little highlights. Um, or yeah, I won't be covering that in this uh, video. So we've got our clean car paint ready to get started. So it's just a principled BSDF. And I'm just gonna make this a little bit glossy just so I can work with it a little bit better. So the first thing to consider with a car paint is you need a base color. You need to set the metallicness. You need to set the roughness. And then you also need to think about a clear coat and um, a orange peel sort of bump um, so that the uh, reflections aren't just perfectly smooth. Whenever you're doing this, always look at references for a car that you're trying to mimic, or at least just look at some car paints and try to get an idea of what you're trying to achieve. So I'm gonna get started with the base color. So for a base color, I'm going to do a layer weight node and then plug that facing into a color ramp like so and then plug that color ramp into the factor of the mix color node. Like so, and then plug that into the base color. Now from here, we can already get quite a nice sort of look, that sort of Fresnel look that I was talking about. You can get some pretty cool results, something that you'd see out of like Fast and Furious or something. But for now, I'll just stick with red. Now for the metallic and roughness, I'm going to leave that. We're going to be controlling that all by a group input. So we can change that later. So the next thing I'm going to do is do the Voinoi texture. So I'm going to shift A, Voinoi, and then I'm going to press control T. If nothing's happening for you, you need to enable the Node Wrangler by going into edit preferences and then just enabling Node Wrangler. So with this Voinoi, I'm going to control it by the object texture space and I'm going to plug a geometry node and this Voinoi texture into a mix color. And I'm going to plug the normal into the top and then the Voinoi texture into the bottom and then apply a linear light. So with this, we can start to control the amount that the Voinoi texture shows up. And this basically allows us to have it just showing up in the glossy areas. So I'm gonna set mine to about 0.1, something around there, maybe like 0.05. And then from there, I'm gonna get another color ramp, and this is gonna control the color of it. 
So I'm going to plug the colour into there. And if I view this, I'm just going to crunch it so that we're only getting some of them. And then I'm going to bring this white down ever so slightly so that it's not really in your face. If you're thinking that's too big, uh, it's because this scale we're also going to control by a group input value, which means we don't need to change it now. But for the sake of this video, I'll just make it so it's a little bit the size that we'd probably have it. So let's go like 1500. So from there, I'm going to add in a vector math node and I'm going to set that to normalize to normalize this output so that we can use it in a bump channel. And then I'm going to get a glossy and plug in the normal into the normal and then this color into the no color. And then as well as this, I'm going to make sure that this is set to completely glossy, which is a value of zero. So if we view this now, we can see that it's only showing in the parts which will probably get highlights, which is what we want. Now we need to find a way to add these together. So the simplest way is to just shift A, add shader, and then plug that one into the top and that one to the bottom. And now we've got our flakes only showing up in the highlights, which is pretty cool. Now from there, um, we need to add in our clear coat and our orange peel sort of bump texture. So I'm gonna shift A, noise texture, control T again to map it and map it by the object space, which means we don't need to unwrap our objects. And I'm gonna set the scale to about 215. And then I'm gonna plug that into a bump node and plug the factor into the height. And then I'm going to get a glossy BSDF again, plug the normal into the normal and just make sure our roughness is set to zero again. Now, if we view this, we can see it's looking really strong, but that's fine. We'll control it after. First, let's mix our clear coat on top of our original material. So I'm going to go shift A, mix shader, plug this one into the top, this one into the bottom, and then preview that. And we can see it's not really mixing right. It's a bit too strong. So what we want to do is add in a Fresnel node and plug that factor into that factor. And now we can see it's starting to mix a little bit better. Obviously it's a bit too strong. So let's look at this bump texture now. So if we come down to the bump and just decrease it to maybe 0 0.001, it's looking okay. Let's just do 0 0.01. And then we can see our reflections are starting to separate a little bit, which is looking a little bit more real. So I'm going to set it to about 0 0.05 and that looks good. And this basically breaks up your reflections, so it looks a little bit more real. Now with this Fresnel, uh, you can control it based on sort of your preference. Um, but I like to set mine at just a solid value of about 1.5. I think that that works really well. And then as well as that, you may have seen on that intro video that I had a few smudges on mine. So what we can do there is bring in a imperfection map. So let's just find one. So maybe the smear map. You can just use a standard black and white material if you haven't got this add on. But we can map that by the object space and then plug that into the roughness. And from there, we can control how um, sort of perfect our clear coat is. So obviously this is way too strong and probably too big. So I'm just going to scale this to about three and it doesn't matter that we're getting this right now. Um, I'd probably map it using the UV map, but just for this tutorial, I'll show you the object space. So I'm going to preview our final shader and I'm just going to bring this black value, this white value down just so we can see we're getting a little bit of imperfections on this paint very subtle but it really helps sell that realism and actually i think that bump material is looking a bit too big so i'm going to set it to one and that's looking a little bit better so that's looking good so now we can set our group inputs so what i'm going to do is grab everything press ctrl g and then our group input over here i'm going to start grabbing all the inputs that we want to change on the fly so i'm going to grow over here and input our two colors i'm going to import our metallic and our roughness 
and then I'm also going to import our flake scale. So we can see over here, if you haven't got this option, press N. You can name these. So I'm going to call that one base color. I'm going to name this one Brunel color. And the metallic is done, roughness is done. And then I'm going to name this one flake scale. And then if we press control tab, we can come out of that. And now we can see we've got our node group. So we can go into our node and we can name this car paint. And now we have our node set up. And if you want to use this on any of your other um, jobs, you can right click mark as asset. And then it will essentially come up in here that you can use on all your different projects. So just so we can see everything working, we've got our red and our um, Fresnel color. We've got our metallicness and also our roughness set up and then our flake scale. You could also set your clear coat value. So you could put your input here into that IOL and you could change your IOR on the fly if you really wanted to. So yeah, that's pretty much the car paint material. I hope you've learned something or uh, made your own that you can use on all your future projects. Um, if you did, uh, leave a comment, um, like and subscribe if you haven't already. And uh, I'll see you in the next video.